I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'll be showing you how to install the Trailtech 70 watt complete stator on a Honda CRF 230X. When adding extra lighting or accessories to your bike in turn, you will want to upgrade this stator along with it. Now, the CRF 230F stock will put out about 30 watts of electricity, which really isn't enough power to run any electrical accessories. So by installing the high output stator kit from Trailtech, it's gonna bring our total wattage up to about 70 watts, which will leave us plenty of room to install electrical accessories, such as a headlight. So today we'll be showing you how to install this kit on a 2015 Honda CRF 230F. Now the steps that we're gonna show you here today can also be applied to installing this kit on every year of the Honda CRF 230F, as well as the years 2003 to 2005 on the Honda CRF 150F. To do this job, we're just going to need a few basic hand tools. You will want to have some dielectric grease, some gasket sealer, zip ties, a paint pen, some medium strength thread locker, electrical tape, scotch bright, and a gasket scraper, rubber gloves, rags, safety glasses, contact cleaner, and some grease. You will also want to pick up a replacement stator cover gasket, and you can find these on our website under the OEM diagrams for your bike. You will also want to pick up a stator kit from Trailtech. The Trailtech stator kit includes an in-depth set of written instructions that will include diagrams and pictures. This is what we will be following along for this installation. To begin, start by removing the seat. Then remove the fuel tank. Remove the left side number plate. Next, we can either drain the engine oil or lay the bike on its right side. Before removing any of the engine case covers, be sure to clean around the gasket mating surfaces with some contact cleaner to remove any dirt or debris. Next, remove the starter gear cover. Remove the starter gear. Before removing the foot shifter, be sure to index it with a paint pen, so that way we can put it back on the same position that it was when we took it off. Remove the foot shifter. Then remove the sprocket cover. Next, locate the neutral switch wire. Remove the collar from it, then remove the wire from the switch. If you have a 150F, you can move on to the stator removal. Remove the bolt and alternator wire clip. Next, remove the stator case cover. Remove the two dowel pins and gasket. The dowels may or may not come out. If they don't, that's okay, don't force them. Just make sure that you keep track of them and know where they go. Remove the wire clamp and grommet from the left crankcase cover. Remove the three alternator stator mounting bolts and two crankshaft position sensor mounting bolts. Remove the stator assembly from the left crankcase cover. Clean both of the gasket mating surfaces. Make sure to clean the mating surfaces with some contact cleaner. Install the Trailtech stator into the case cover. Apply some engine oil to the threads of the fasteners and seating surfaces. Install the stator mounting bolts and tighten them. Apply medium strength thread locker to the crank position sensor mounting bolt threads. Install the crank position sensor mounting bolts and tighten them to 3.6 foot-pounds. Apply some gasket sealer to the rubber grommet on the wire harness, then fit the rubber grommet to the case cover. Install the wire clamp, aligning the hole with the boss on the left crankcase cover. Install new crankcase cover gasket with dowels onto the engine. Before installing the left side crankcase cover, be sure to clean the starter motor's O-ring with some contact cleaner and a rag to remove any dirt or debris, then go ahead and grease the O-ring. Before we install the stator cover onto the engine's case, we're going to coat this area of the rubber grommet on the wire harness with some gasket sealer. Next, carefully install the stator cover onto the left side crankcase. 
Then insert the fasteners, then torque them in a crisscross pattern to seven foot pounds. Route the alternator wire properly. Then connect the white breakout wire from the stator harness to the neutral position switch. Once the neutral switch wire has been installed, you don't have to, but it's good to put some dielectric grease on this connection just to protect it. Install the alternator wire clamp and tighten the bolt. Apply oil to the starter reduction gear shaft and install it. Coat the starter reduction gear cover o-ring with grease and install it, then tighten the bolts. Install the drive sprocket cover and then tighten the bolts. Reinstall the foot shifter. Then connect the Trailtech stator connector to the OEM harness. Next, we need to locate a flat surface on the forward right-hand side of the airbox. Before we permanently mount the regulator rectifier to this location, be sure to mount the seat and verify that you have clearance between the underside of the seat and the top side of the regulator rectifier. Then thoroughly clean the top of the airbox with some contact cleaner and a rag. Then we can apply the supplied VHB pad to the regulator rectifier, then mount it on top of the airbox. Next, route the regulator rectifier leads across the airbox and down to the stock stator connections. Route the harness connector with fuse and connect the 4-pin white connector to the regulator rectifier. Connect both yellow wires from the stator to the yellow wires on the harness with fuse. When making this connection, it does not matter which one goes to which. Connect the fused harness to battery positive and battery negative. Make sure to secure the wiring to the frame with zip ties and make sure to avoid sharp bends and sharp edges. Make sure none of the wires will get pinched when the seat and tank are installed. The red with yellow tracer wire is an optional 12 volt DC power wire that can be used to power an accessory during motor operation. If you will not be using this wire, make sure to seal it up so that it is waterproof. All right, now the last few steps from here would be to reinstall our gas tank, the seat, and then our side cover. And when doing so, make sure that you don't pinch any of the wires. And that's it. That's really all there is to it when it comes to installing an upgraded stator kit. Now, this is really a must have, especially if you plan on running some aftermarket accessories. Now, if you like this video and you want to see more, make sure to hit the like button, then subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, how to's, and top fives. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching and keep the wrenches turning.